بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. The thing I appreciate about a lot of Muslims is, um, I don't know if it, maybe it's because of your 21st century oppression. So you know about shaitan, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. But I want to really appreciate, you know, the sincerity that you have. For 300 years, the church uh, mold. Dude, I'm starting to think that the devil's like kind of like a really, really sick comedian where he's always trying to... Over those two words. For 2,000 years, the church has taught that God and the Trinity are synonyms. 16 and onwards. How do you remember all that, bro? <laughs> I'm so good at that. <laughs> this is the Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum, greetings of peace. Welcome to the D Show. We have another exciting show. He's back again. He's an actor, comedian. He was also the script writer for Louder from Crowder. Also helped to write, a, I believe, a theme song for Tommy Robinson. Guess who's back here on the D Show? Our good friend, Owen Benjamin. Go ahead and subscribe right now. Hit that notification bell. Help us get our numbers back up. Did you know that many years ago, the Dean Show, when we started 2006, we used to broadcast for many years on the Khalifa Clothing Channel, currently known as Digital Minbar. So we're trying to get our numbers back up because the channel at that time got closed. Then we started the official Dean Show channel. We're trying to get our numbers back up to where they should be. And that's this number here, 855, combined with what we currently have, 442. We should be over a million two hundred thousand subscribers help us to get our numbers back to where they should be with that small setback that we had many years ago you guys can help us by subscribing right now and hitting that notification bell thank you very much enjoy the rest of the show salam alaikum and don't forget to support us on our patreon page what's up buddy how are you man good how are you good to see you how you been I've been really good. It's uh, it's really hot here, and as you can see, I'm I'm in my uh, I'm in an animal stall right now, cause uh, it's like 105 in Idaho, and uh, this is the coolest place I could find. Did I uh, hit all those points right? Actor, comedian, former scriptwriter for uh, Crowder, route louder Crowder, and did I hit all those right? Did I leave anything out? Uh, yeah. I mean, I've I've been at this a long time. Those are some interesting credits. I guess I've, I, it's been quite a quite a journey, my friend. I started. I started. Yeah, we. Could, I wanted to talk to you about comedy today, anyway. So, like the the journey of it has been pretty interesting. Um, like I started as a piano player and then a heckler at a Renaissance fair where I made fun of people who threw tomatoes at me when I was in high school. And then uh, Sam, I did stand up comedy for a bit, opened for Kevin Hart before anyone knew who he was in college, and then. <clears throat> um, Sandler put me in some movies because he saw me do stand up, and then I did Leno and Fallon and all this other stuff. And then, you know, I was one of the leads of a sitcom in LA. And then I was uh, outspoken about being against transgender children because I thought it was insane. And so then my agent Madger dropped me. And then, you know, as you're as you're kind of leaving the beast, the next level is kind of grabby, and the next level was like the neocon type, like Prager and Crowder and all those people i thought they were speaking more of the truth and then when i started uh getting out of some of those illusions uh i i left you know same with tommy robinson and all those guys and now i'm just kind of doing my own thing and um you know i do a lot of farming and i do a live stream every day and we have an app and we're trying to really figure out the best way to keep comedy going and not having it be so illusion based and political you know mm -hmm. We're going to touch upon a lot of different things. I really, really enjoyed talking to you last time. We got such a positive feedback. A lot of the bears, you know, they really enjoyed it. And yeah, I, it. yeah so we just really connected. It was a really uh, positive program we did. I have a good friend of mine. He's also going to join us. His name is Dr. Sabil. Dr. Hey, Sabil, cool. how, are you? how are you? No no stranger. He's from Game Peace, the director of Game Peace. Owen Benjamin, this is Dr. Sabil. He's going to be joining us on this episode of the Dean Show. Sweet. All right. Nice I want to you. So I want to. Good, good. Good to see you. You too. I want to get right into this. Uh, you did a program not too long ago, and I'm going to show some clips. You you've been talking about 
Uh, we'll talk about farming towards the end. We want to talk about uh, something that's precious to you, to us, you know, uh, the purpose, purpose of life, you know, talk about, you know, many of the things, you know, uh, the moral decay of society. We'll touch upon that. You know, a lot of the commonalities that we have, we'll talk about uh, the beard. <laughs> you touch upon that. <laughs> uh, but let me start off with this clip. There was an intervention not too long ago. We're, we're, there was an intervention. What was it called? A Trinity intervention? Trinity intervention, yeah. 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 So now you brought up, there was um, Dr. Rachel, Patrick Coffin, Dr. Michael Jones, and then uh, a gentleman, a person by the name of Milo. He organized this. What, how did that how did that start off why what was what was the whole uh, pretext behind setting this up why were they because uh, I've seen some of your videos you were kind of questioning the Trinity yeah I mean and I'm friendly with all these people I, I love um, E. Michael Jones and dr. Brown and I, I didn't know uh, Patrick Coffin before the intervention and, and then I know Milo he's he's a really interesting character you know he's a real trickster but I root for the guy. And so this all came about because as a Christian, I, 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 I was questioning Jesus being God. And I know this is a little heavy just for like a conversation, but like, I don't think it's really backed up in the Bible personally. Like I was always like, who's he praying to, you know? And I was being very innocent about it. And I don't, I'm not mad at people who think that, like I'm used to having a lot of friends and acquaintances having different beliefs, but you know, my thing is I might be wrong, but I'm not lying. That's always what I go with. And that allows me to to live a life with a heart based life where I can make mistakes and, and keep going is because at the time I believe it, you know. And so I had all these questions about, um, you know, Jesus doing the, the bidding of his father and how you can be your own father and all these like basic questions, you know, and I was raised Catholic and and to get more into the Bible, I started seeing it more as God and then Jesus being the, the representative on earth, the, the logos incarnate. And so they did this, uh, this like intervention. And I thought it went pretty well because I don't know, I took it with a grain of sand, you know, but I, I just like, uh, I don't know why people care so much about it. You know, it seems like that dogma has kind of made it like the center point of so much of Christianity these days. And there's so much in the Bible that, uh, is so interesting and so helpful, especially in these tumultuous times that I don't get why that's the be all end all of so many churches. And so, yeah, that's what that's about. One thing that I, I wouldn't I would have I would have disagreed in the beginning before you even you even um, got into the uh, Trinity was the homestead. You know, the uh, civilization is to be in the city. You know what I mean? And this and, and people trying to look down upon that you know, who are not really keen to really like you talk about planting your own fruit trees, you know, your son, your son's getting out there, developing good work ethic, connecting with nature, you know what I mean? Uh, growing your own food, right? Away from GMOs, away, you know, nutrition, proper nutrition. And it's like uh, people looking at, uh, I think it was kind of uh, made to seem like, okay, the quote was, uh, you know, to, to be civilization is in the cities, you know? And, <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is crazy to me. And that's why I think that the real disconnect with people is a lot more uh, between rural and urban and basically how much sovereignty and how much uh, responsibility have you taken upon yourself. And it's really interesting that that to get out of some of these spells was a lot of it had to do with living a, a more similar life, like like rural Christianity or rural Islamic people would probably have a lot more in common than super urban uh, members of even their same religion sometimes because you have a lot, your life is more similar. You know, I, uh, when I used to, you know, after the 9-11 spell, I, you know, blamed, I, I was never like hardcore, but I was like, you know, we got to go to war, you know, we got to, we got to avenge, you know, never forget all that stuff. Like, it, you know, it made sense to me at the time. And as that spell faded, and one of the reasons it faded was, um, I got my own goats and I was attacked by the media and I saw a lot of the same patterns that they did to Muslims happen to me. And, and you know, uh, being a self-sustaining guy with goats, you know, be, like mocking that. And then some of my friends were doing the same jokes against me that I was doing against Muslims, which were more just like rural. It's not even it's a category error. It's all very interesting. But like I started being like, 
oh no, that's not what that means. And then I saw how the media was attacking me and try to categorize me as a political position and not just who I am. And I saw the same pattern they were doing to Muslims. And um, I don't hold on to grudges or spells the minute I see through it, even if it, it costs me a lot of social uh, points and, and financial points. You know, that was one of the disagreements I had with a lot of the neocons is that, um, you know, Islam isn't the enemy. You know, it's like especially another reason is, you know, you can say mass migration is you can say that flooding a country with a lot of people from another country to keep this this debt-based nonsense global machine going, sure. But I noticed a very tricky thing they were doing. They kept talking about Muslim immigrants, but yet in America, you'd say Mexicans, not Christians. You know, like most Mexicans are Catholic or Christian, but you wouldn't categorize them as that. You'd say Mexicans. So it's interesting how you have tribe and religion, these two categories. And another thing that, that ingratiated me to Islamic culture is one, I have a very close friend who's one of the wisest people I know, and he's really Muslim. And also, I don't believe in debt, like personally, like I think debt is how a lot of people are manipulated. And so um, I like to listen to YouTube videos about economics and, and debt and money. And the only ones I could find in that world were Islamic scholars, because every other economic system seems to be like, oh, this is cheap debt, expensive debt, all this. And I'm like, I wanted advice from people that don't want any debt, like no mortgage, no debt. And so I kept being drawn to Islamic scholars. And then you see through the lies. And um, if you're being attacked that hard by the Mus uh, by the media, you're, you're probably doing something right. So that's kind of my my journey out of, um, you know, out of seeing Muslims as, as the enemy and, and seeing like the spell for what it is, you know, we're going to jump into some of these clips and get your guys uh, reaction. But you mentioned 9-11. What do you think about this one? I don't know if you've ever heard of um, uh, David Ray Griffin. He said all the all the evidence that America was attacked. This is a Christian now professor emeritus. Yeah. He said the evidence that all the evidence that's presented that America was attacked by Muslims on 9-11 when subjugated to critical scrutiny appears to have been fabricated. This is a Christian who came out, he, he wrote the most on this. So we have a new slogan uh, when it comes around, never forget, uh, we will never forget, Islam and Muslim had nothing to do with 9-11. I don't know if you know, this is the new slogan. Good for you, yeah. And, it, and even if it was 19 people who called themselves Muslim, there's nothing in the Quran. I've, I've asked a bunch of my friends about this. There's no commandment or anything. It has nothing to do with Islam. And you can't label, you can't put, a label on a billion plus people for the actions of 19, like no white Christian American would want that, you know, like the actions of a small group of people being perpetuated onto a demographic is without question a bad thing to do. So I think after the emotions of that and then the truther movement of like what happened to building seven and all this stuff, you know, I actually swung too far the other way for a little while. And I was like feeling victimized by like Jews and Zionists and stuff and how like, they tricked me and dead and pornography and all that. And then I realized that they're also being used by, you know, shaitan. It's like shaitan. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like so, so these guys are, 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 are being used in the system the same way, like much worse, actually. And so the key is just to get out of debt yourself. Don't consume their media. And then you see them as a lot of people that are just way off the path and, and could use a little love themselves, you know? Yeah. Well, so you know about shaitan, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. One of my best friends is Muslim. And like Masha. the interesting thing is it's uh, a lot. Of, one thing I appreciate about a lot of Muslims is um, I don't know if it maybe it's because of your 21st century oppression, especially in the West, but you're way more connected to the religion of it. Like, like you, you are living it more like it's real versus a lot of. American Christians um, are, are more detached from it. The rural ones are more connected, but a lot of the big mega churches and stuff, I'm like, you're not even reading it like it's real. You know, like I have all these questions and I'm trying to connect to God and I'm like really taking this stuff seriously. And a lot of them are like, they act like it's not real. And then you have a lot of Muslims I know and a lot of, um, you know, the Amish, the Mennonites, some of the Mormons I know, like it's not just Muslims, but it's like, a lot of the Muslims I know are in it more. And I really respect that about you guys because it's like, 
it's not just like a, an intellectual idea. It's not a place to go on Sundays. It's like a real way to live your life. And, you know, that's why I'm trying to pick up the plow and do my uh, work and really connect to nature and to God as much as I can. And a lot of these city people, they, they don't seem like they have any interest in it at all, you know? Much of the audience is going to appreciate what you're saying regarding that. Thank you. Let's let's go into these uh, clips. This is the inter the the famous intervention, right. which is one of the sacred mysteries of the Catholic faith, and it's a, 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 a truth that is beyond human comprehension. We can know that God exists through reason, but we couldn't know what He was like uh, unless He told us, and He told us through the Scriptures, uh, basically with you by using two words. The two words are Logos and Son. And, be, and for 300 years, the church uh, mulled over those two words, and they came up with the doctrine of the Trinity. But since the Trinity is the ultimate reality of the universe, uh, there's evidence of the Trinity in nature. And one of the people who discovered this was Pythagoras, probably the first one who discovered it, and he discovered it in the realm of number. And number for Pythagoras, uh, one uh, had meaning. All the numbers had meaning, and the number one uh, meant unity, and the number two meant diversity, and the number three meant unity in diversity. If you take unity in diversity, another word for that is beauty. And beauty is a transcendental, which means it's an attribute of God. And so you have an example of the uh, evidence of the Trinity in nature itself, which kind of diffuses the whole issue of uh, accepting it completely on faith alone. All right, so what's going on here for you guys that don't know, Owen Benjamin here is on the right, and then you have Dr. Rachel here, you have Patrick Coffin, and Dr. Michael Jones, who were just speaking. So we're going to go through some of the videos. And, and they're, what they're doing, uh, help me out, um, Owen, is that they're trying to persuade you or they're trying to do an intervention because you're questioning some of these things. So we're going to look at some of the arguments that they're making. Just talk about it. Uh, Dr. Sabil, if give you a background, Owen. He's actually a medical doctor by profession. He gave up uh, his medical... Uh, career to go ahead and help educate people in, uh, on Islam to dedicate his life full time. He runs an organization called Gain Peace. He's the director of Gain Peace, and he's also here to answer any questions that you have also on Islam. Because I remember you said before you about bringing on an imam, so he's the closest thing to that. So he's he's someone who's also an expert in comparative religion. He's dedicated a great portion of his time to the Bible, to understanding it, and to um, helping, you know, create dialogue and uh, these kind of talks um, with people of other faiths. So what do you think? Uh, Dr. Sabil, you want to comment on it? Or Owen, Owen, who wants to go first on? Go ahead. I'd love to hear you. Yes, yes. So, Brother Owen, you know, as soon as I saw that video, you know, I didn't see that whole one hour, 30 minutes, right? I mean, I started to watch it. It was just too overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. The way that they were stopping you and ridiculing you, I thought, I mean, I just didn't feel right. Yeah, they muted me. So I just started going like this and like doing. I know you were doing like this and you were trying yeah. to like say something. He kept on muting you. But regardless, you know, this person who came up uh, and he said, you know, Catholic, they believe in Trinity, mathematical equation and beauty in nature. Didn't you realize that he failed to give a single evidence from the Bible? Yeah, yeah, totally. And and I will say I love E. Michael Jones and all those people. Like they are good people. Like I'm not mad at them at all. But like that was totally I was the only one quoting the Bible and I couldn't stop laughing. And other thing is I was the only one in nature. So he keeps talking about nature, and I'm like in nature, like surrounded by nature. And I'm like, guys, you you want to know about all the numbers in nature? There's fours, there's twos, there's fives, there's eights, there's nine. Wait, wait till you get into the, some of the fractals, you know? And um I, I get what they're saying, and I understand how there is a lot of threes in nature, you know, where it's like um, father, mother, child, you know, where you have all kinds of, you know, um, ice, water, gas, all that stuff. But, like, I, I, I instinctively have a feeling, like, to apply that to God is is off. And, and I have a right to think that way. And if people have a problem with that, that's their problem, because I have not distanced myself to, from people that believe that at all, in fact. 
I got none but love for him. It seemed like the reaction against me was so disproportionate mm -hmm. where it's like they were almost more mad at me for saying Jesus wasn't God, like that statement. Uh, and, and I was like, he's in, like uh, doing God's will. He's like connected. He's like fully in the will of God, but it wasn't enough. It was like that anger made me start as a comedian. You know, you, you can feel the stress. It's almost like being a masseuse. Like, uh, there's a knot there, and you're like, oh, that's where I got to hit. Because it's like the overreaction where you can't do a joke about, you know, Caitlyn, Bruce Jenner, or whatever. Like, when I saw that, I'm like, that's where I got a joke. Or when it's like you can't do jokes about men and women anymore out of Hollywood. Like, I'm like, so that's where I got to hit. And the same thing happened with Trinity, where I was like, why are you calling me a heathen, saying I'm going to hell, saying I'm not Christian, all this stuff, when, like, Jesus in the Bible is talking about praying to God and how we'll do more than he ever did and how to help connect us to God the Father and all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't see it in the Bible. And then people are like, John 3.16 and all this stuff. And I'm like, but there's so much that isn't that. And so, and I'm not a theologian and I, I'm, I don't, it's like if I go too far into that or that's why I don't go into politics either. I can't do my job as a comedian because I can't have sick house. But like I felt it was my obligation as somebody that makes fun of stuff, you know, and the joke that I, I, I started doing was, uh, you know, they'd say 100 percent man, 100 percent God. And I'm like and so then I'm like, so can I pray to the Holy Ghost like 100 percent ghost, 100 percent God? And they're like, no, that doesn't make any sense. I'm like, I know. Right. I'm like, the ghost is God too then? It's like, oh no, the ghost isn't God. I'm like, 100% ghost, 100% God. You know, and they're like, no, no, it's just the other way though. I'm like, but if it's a trinity and all three are one and all one are three, then the ghost is God. And they're like, and a lot of people laughed at that because our Catholic upbringing really didn't explore the Bible as much as some of my other Christian friends that I have now, rural Christians that are more biblically based. We'd all ask these questions and everyone just told us to shut up when we we're kids. And then we just never went back to it. And it just became part of our identity, you know, <laughs> you know, one one stark uh, difference between Catholicism, Christianity compared to Islam. There are close to 700 passages in the Quran that encourages and obligates people to speak up, to think and ponder and ask questions. Yeah, Not blindly believe just because our parents and ancestors used to believe certain way. That's what makes us different from animals, right? We are different. We are so exactly, different. dude. Exactly. Yeah, animals react. I mean, animals are very beautiful. I'm with them right now, as you can see. Oh, but okay. like the difference is they're based in a world of reaction. There's a lot of love in animals. I got love for animals, but it's they don't have that other gear that I'm not going to give up. It's the same thing with what's happening with a lot of the global stuff. That, you know, we'll, I, we don't need to discuss it. Makes sense. It I'd like to test it out. But Sorry. it's like, uh, but it's like to not be able to question things. A, I could not be a comedian at all. You know, I used to do bits about all the nonsense. Where it's like someone just, someone invited me to go to a, to a skin cancer walk in Los Angeles, and I was like outside. You know, like little silly jokes like that. Where it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Where it's like, oh, Caitlyn Jenner's Woman of the Year, but hasn't been a woman for a full year. Isn't that mathematically impossible? You know, like. Those little things are what make a comedian a comedian. And those are also a thing that make you a living man, you know, um, more more in the realm of, of God's creation and not just servitude. And I think there's some real nefarious powers to be that want us a lot more like cattle than like living men. And that is in a world of reaction. Wear the mask today. Take the mask off. Do this. Don't do that. You know, and I just won't do that because if you give that up, you give up all the gifts you have, you know. Yeah. Here's the second. Here's the second one, Dr. Rachel. And we'll t get you uh, after this, Dr. Sabil. Yes, I'd like to test it out with us. The problem of understanding the Trinity is the problem of understanding how the Maker of all things, heaven and earth, can enter into His own artwork, right? And this is—it's the way Tolkien puts it in one of his dialogues, where he's the elf and the the woman are talking, and she's saying, "Wouldn't it just break everything to have the Author of all things, in fact, become part of the story?" which is why it breaks our brains to consider it, right? And, and I think I heard you saying, we don't understand, how do you conceptualize creation, right? How do you understand the, the, the idea that we're all made, we're all creatures, we're all some, 
Well, one of my favorite authors is Dorothy Sayers, and she has a, a wonderful book called The Mind of the Maker, where she talks through this, this metaphor of what it means to say God is the maker of heaven and earth, and how, in fact, the Trinity is a metaphor that's helping us understand what it means to be artists made in the image and likeness of God, which this is different from the Dr. Seville. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, you know, not a single passage from the Old Testament, New Testament, any scripture, just philosophical, just philosophical. You know, one of the marks of a true faith is that it does not defy our hearts, our minds and the scriptures. Because there are so many faiths out there and, uh, you know, we don't have to be a theologian to, to demarcate, you know, which one is the right and which one can be the diluted versions of the original. So when we look at, uh, you know, the philosophical discussion that she's mentioning right away if i were there i would have alluded her to the old testament and the new testament and gave her two passages one passage from the old testament is the very first commandment of the ten commandments in the book of exodus chapter 20 verse number three god says do not take any other god besides me right singular besides me yeah it means no human no holy ghost no animal no idol can be equated with god that is the very first, the most important commandment of the 613 commandments of the Old Testament. When it comes to the New Testament, Brother Owen, you'll be so surprised to find out that one time a Jewish person approached Jesus and asked him a million dollar question. That of all the commandments of the Old Testament, which one is the first, the greatest of all of them? This is in the Gospel of Mark, the second Gospel, chapter number 12, verse number 29. Jesus, he replied, that here, O Israel, the Lord, our God, his only one, right? worship him. He didn't say worship me or Holy Ghost. Worship him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And that is the first commandment. Yeah, in fact, there's a, a passage in the New Testament. I don't remember where, where Jesus uh, actually stops someone from giving him honor and says, give it to God. And it's those situations yes. where, I, where I'm like, how does that make any sense if he's God? Like someone was giving him the honor, giving him the worship, and he literally said, no. He said, don't do that. Give it to the Father. And I'm I, this is in my Christian Bible, and I'm like, I don't see. And, and, and this is a cool thing about Islam and Christianity. This is one reason why I think these lines are so heavy in the sand is because without the Trinity, Islam and Christianity shouldn't be enemies. Like they shouldn't. You know, even with the Trinity, I wouldn't be an enemy of somebody that believes something else than me. But like you're worshiping the same God, you know, and so it's like, yeah, my one of my Muslim friend is like informed me that you guys have an updated version. He's like, oh, yeah, Muhammad, peace be upon you know, all that. but I'm like the broad strokes aren't that different. It just isn't really anything to be super fired up about, you know. Yeah, there's a there's a passage, the one you're I think you're referring to. That's Mark ten eighteen, where a man came to him and said, "Oh, good master, what good thing can I do that I may have eternal life? I mean, how do I get to paradise?" He said, "Why do you call me good? There's none good but God." That's just like someone I always compared coming to me as a martial artist, and someone's just like, "Man, Eddie, you could just kick some butt. You're so you know." And I'm just being humble, you know what I mean? But Jesus now he's like supposed to be the creator of the heavens and the earth, you know? No, he's being humble. He's saying, "Look." You know, he's saying God is the greatest, you know, turn all your love to God. You know what I mean? He's keeping it humble and directing that person and every all of them to the one that he worshiped, to the creator of the heavens and the earth. So in, in John chapter five, verse number 30, Jesus is mentioning to his people, to the disciples, saying that I of myself, I cannot do anything. Whatever I hear, I judge. My judgment is true because I seek not my own will, but the will of God who sent me. It's so important yeah, yeah. not be as clear yeah. as that. Yeah, and that's why it's not even it's not unchristian to question these things when you read the New Testament. That's why people get so mad at me, and I'm like, I don't, I don't understand the anger. There's also, and and even the parts that the Trinitarians are so obsessed about, like I can't, remember, I think it might have been Philip, but it was uh, where it was like, basically, how do I know God? And Jesus basically said. Uh, you've been with me this whole time. Have you not known God this whole, you know, I equate that to like being in the, when you're that committed to the will of God, you feel the presence around prophets around, you know, uh, his, his servants. Like if, if somebody dedicates their life to God on that level, it's like, 
haven't you felt God when you're with me? Like they, I'm doing his will, you know? And other people say like, that means he is God. And I'm like, so did he make himself? And then they say, uh, well, in Genesis, in the beginning, I think there was a plural, like we or something. There was like mm -hmm. a, a plural uh, verbiage. Yes. And do you guys have any ideas about that? Like in the beginning, who is God with in the, in the plurality of that? Yeah, yeah. In the in the book of Genesis, chapter number one, I believe, verse number twenty six and on sixteen and onwards. How do you remember all that, bro? <laughs> I don't know so good at that. <laughs> like that's crazy, man. <laughs> Passages which are so important of contention that you know we just need to know them. That's amazing. Here, it's, <laughs> so, brother you Owen, lock it in. brother Owen, it says in there that let us make man in our image, right? Our, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the Trinitarians, they will look at it and say, you know, there you go. There is a us, there's a plural, there's a Trinity. But those people who knows Hebrew or Arabic, they know that in the Semitic languages, there can be a royal V, a royal plural of authority. Interesting. In, yeah, so this is how the languages are. So in the Quran also, it speaks about V, when God is only referring to one person singular. So this is just the nature of the language. So yeah. our people who don't know Hebrew or Aramaic or Arabic, they think this is a plural of Trinity. No, this is a plural of authority. For that reason, not a single Jewish scholar in the history, they took that as Trinity. They took that as a plural of authority. Right. We need to talk about the word of God. The written word of God has the Trinity all over it, even though we need a, an external uh, authority to kind of draw that out and synthesize it. But it's a really funny meme. You'll like this. Uh, and it's my picture of how bad catechesis has become in, instruction, in the faith. So it's it's our Lord in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he's like pleading against a rock. And he's saying, Dad, it's me, you. Yeah, I wrote yeah, that yeah, joke. You see that? I wrote that joke. <laughs> so, uh, so what? So, so the, all I want to say is, what might help you, and I, I'm not trying to convert you because I can't. But what no, might help cool. is yeah, is the it. okay. So it's it's the distinction between a nature and a person. See, for two thousand years, the church has taught that God and the Trinity are synonyms. God is a Trinity, even if He hadn't created anything, He's still Father, and the Son is always being generated in the eternal Godhead. What really helped me from Frank Sheed's book was that all analogies are really, really, uh, they're prone to limping badly when it comes to the Godhead because you can always find some flaw in it and then dismiss it. But um, the distinction between nature and person, to me, it was like light bulb after light bulb going off, that God is one nature, he's, he's divine, he's uncreated, he's all holy, and that is that, that one divinity is wholly possessed by three divine persons. So this is the third person. This is uh, Patrick Coffin, and, and I'll do respect to all of them. And uh, since you know them very well, uh, uh, Owen, if they'd like to come on, we'd love to have just, you know, a nice dialogue with them. Maybe in the future you could set that up. So, uh, Dr. Sabil, okay, so this was the last one. They all had their chance to speak and try to, uh, you know, um, intervene here on for Owen regarding the Trinity. What do you think about this argument, um, uh, Dr. Sabil? The person, the nature, right? Uh, there are three persons within one Godhead. Jesus never said that. None of the prophets of the Old Testament ever defined God like that. See, God, the concept of God is the fundamental truth of any faith. That's the bedrock. That's the foundation of any faith. It has to be clearly defined. It cannot, like, it cannot be a mystery. So all the prophets of God, they clearly, precisely, in a clear-cut way, they all mention there is only one God. And he's the first, he's the last. He's the, you know, in the Old Testament, no less than 2,000 places, like hundreds of places, God says that I am God, worship me. Not a single time Jesus said that I am God yeah. or worship me, right? On top of it, you know, Brother Avon, you'll be so surprised to find out. In the Gospel of John, the fourth Gospel, chapter 17, verse number three, Jesus pointing to the heavens, he said that this is life eternal that you are the only true God and Jesus sent by God. So if they are, there is a category of God, there is only one person in that category, and that is the creator himself. Oh, not I Jesus. Love God. Not I love God. I love Jesus. Go ahead, finish that point, and then we're going to hear Owen here. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's what I'm saying, right? Jesus himself, he mentioned that you are the only true God that excludes him and anyone else from being God. You know, I love God. I love Jesus. I, I the whole insistence that 
I understand Jesus as the word of God, the living word. I understand that. But the creator of the universe, the heaven and earth and, and the other dimension that allows for all that, I don't I just don't understand it. And I'd be lying if I did. And from my personal salvation comes from not lying. So if I go along with something, it's why I got kicked out of Hollywood, because I wouldn't go along with transgender children. I know that's why E. Michael Jones got kicked out of a Catholic college because he wouldn't sign off on abortion, which is one of the reasons Jones is one of my uh, favorite people, because that's huge, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people there said they understood the trilogy, the Trinity, but had no problem killing unborn babies. So I judge people based on, you know, their morality and how much their, uh, as Vox Day says, the good, the true and the beautiful. And right now I'm focused on making communities, local um, supply chains as the world collapses because of, uh, you know, graft and disorder. And so if anyone wants to join Bertaria Times app, <laughs> join that. I'm going to pitch my app. Let me do it for I'm you. Let me do, let me do it for you. All right, I I want to I want a couple of things that uh, o, 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 Owen said. He mentioned uh, obviously uh, believing, loving Jesus. We love Jesus. You cannot. It's a tenant of faith, and this is not no like magic spell. Nothing. There are six articles of faith, and uh, to be a Muslim, and one of us is, is to believe in the messengers, and Jesus being one of the five greatest messengers. Peace be upon him. Uh, so you, if you say that I don't believe in Jesus, this can land you a ticket to the hellfire, literally. If you deny Jesus in Islam, remember Islam only means to submit your will to the creator of the heavens and earth. And a Muslim is one because we get caught up on these terms and people think Muslim, Arab in the desert. But a Muslim is just simply summarized with with uh, in one word, one who submits his or her will to God, to the creator of the heavens and earth. So when he says that I believe he's the word of God, what, what do you think when, when he says that, Dr. Sabil? Don't we believe that also? Yeah, well, yes. Yeah. So in the Quran also it mentions that Jesus is the word of God. But word of God is not like uh, God himself. Word of God is a command of God. You know, for that reason, the Quran says, you know, when people, when they equate Jesus with God and vice versa and says that God is the father because he did not have a father, God himself gave an, uh, gives an argument in the Quran. In chapter number three, verse number 59, God says, that the likeness of Jesus in the eyes of God is similar to the likeness of Adam. He was made from dust and God say be and he was created. So the word of God is the command of God. It's not equal to God. So I think that's right. where the Christian brothers and sisters, they made a mistake that when they say, you know what, when the word became flesh, no. The word is separate. The word is the command of the creator. And by the command of God, Jesus and all of us and the whole creation was created. So that's an important point that we need to convey to them. Yeah, it's like, uh, and you get that when you're on a homestead. Like the the old joke, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Mm -hmm. The answer is God. <laughs> you know, like people are always like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? It's like the chicken. Well, it came from an egg. Well, where the egg come from? A chicken. It came from an egg. It came from. It's like it has to come from the Creator. That's why um, I agree with you on that because it's like you can't. Only God can create that spark. You know, and there's no man, whether you're doing the will of God or not, that's ever made a tree or a fish, right? You know, it just isn't isn't possible for a human being to do that. The human is is capable of making the deceptions and the the illusions and the spellcraft. Oh, and I want to ask you something. One of my uh, Muslim friends got Always me real into uh, spell. Uh, go uh, ahead. Uh, got me real into uh, black seeds because I guess oh. it's in the Quran that that's like the medicine for everything. And I want to, since I have a doctor on here that's also a Muslim, like what's uh because it does work with a lot of stuff that that black human seeds. Mm -hmm. um, what what's what's that all about? Yes, yes. So in the Quran, it mentions in chapter thirty three, verse number twenty one, that we should follow Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Right, his example, his role model, his life. So one of the statements that he made, he gave importance to the black seed. Oh, he also gave gave importance to other fruits and you know some other items. But Don't especially matter. to the yeah, especially to the black seed. So for that reason, the scholars and the you know the the modern day you know the jurists, what they have done is you know, along with the other treatment, other medicine, other advice from the doctors, let's also try the prophetic wisdom that he has mentioned uh, in this statement that taking the black seed, you know, eating it and mixing it in different ways and uh, you know cooking it in different ways. So that's where it comes from, brother.
Here, we're going to get into uh, another clip from Owen here. Enjoy Trinity Spouse because I don't care either. It's ego. Some things can't be fully understood. No, it's not because it can't be understood. It's a magic trick. It's three card Monty. We should start calling it Trinity card Monty. It's a way for sinful people to not have to address their sin. They're just always saved no matter what they do. That's the whole point. That's why they love. That's why they're so obsessed with it. And I've been gate kept by everybody. You know, it's like we have an intervention. You really should be politically correct. So we don't look like cowards. We're going to have an intervention. You really should say Christianity is all about the number three and not living the Bible. <laughs> you know, you look at I'm looking at these like city dwelling, beardless, pale faced much love, much nonsense love. machines. And they're like, oh, we're going to tell you about it. Trinitarians don't read the Bible. They read a million books about the Bible. It's ex exactly, dude. I was the only one mentioning the Bible. And they're like, well, you know, J you know, Tolkien said, I'm like, and I don't even care. The, uh, the, the reason I played play this clip, here's, here's the takeaways. I want to talk about real quickly salvation because uh, he, Owen made a brilliant point of people being able to get away, you know, from accountability of sins. Uh, he mentioned the beard. I don't know if you know, Owen, oh, it's actually required in Islam to have a beard. You know, it's one <laughs> for men to grow beards. So, yeah, it's so. That, uh, so we're, and then, um, yeah, so go ahead, Dr. Sabir. Beard. You know, it's important that I gave this lecture one time and the discussion topic was who is following Jesus more? Are they the Muslims following him or the Christians following him? So I made like five different points that they are, that we are the ones who are following Jesus. So the very yeah. first point that I gave is obviously the beard, right? Because Jesus and all the prophets, they had the beards. And if we love Jesus, be like Jesus. So we are we have the beard because we want to be like him and all the prophets. One, right? Second, when we fast in the month of Ramadan, we are also following the sunnah, the example of all the prophets, including Jesus. Matthew 5, verse number 2. Matthew 4, verse number 2, Jesus used to fast the specific you know, uh, number of days. We are the ones who are actually fasting that way. Not just giving up one item or one thing that we like. Total absentee fasting, the way all the prophets, Jesus used to fast that way. Number three is, when we meet each other, uh, brother, what do we say? Do you know? When Muslims uh, meet with each other. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. Lo and behold, you'll be surprised to find out the book of John, the gospel of John, chapter number 20, verse number 19. Jesus, when he went to the upper chamber, he met his disciples and the very first thing he mentioned to them was, peace be upon you. Right? Number three, Jesus was circumcised. All the prophets were circumcised. Muslim males, we are circumcised. But the biggest thing that we are following about Jesus is he was an absolute monotheistic person. He never believed in Trinity. He never preached Trinity. And monotheism was the main belief or the only foundational belief that he shared with his people. So if you look at anyone in the whole world who is actually practicing and following Prophet Jesus, right? Minutely, we are the ones, Muslims. You know, I mean, if you can add more things, he never ate pork. In the Old Testament, it forbids pork. Leviticus chapter 11, verse number three and onwards. Muslims, we never ate pork. We forbid pork, right? The Quran also forbids eating pork. So we can give many, many examples saying that, yes, Muslims are minutely following Jesus and all the prophets of God, including the last one, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And porn, too. It's like, uh, and then, like when I've done stand-up in the Middle East, um, there's, a, there's a real opposition of pornography. And in, in Matthew, Jesus said, basically, if you look at uh, a woman in lust, you should stab your own eye out, which is you know, pretty intense. And I think a lot of people have gotten way too lackadaisical with those, those lustful tendencies. And uh, I actually think it's the biggest plague on the West right now is pornography. I think it's like the opium war of the 21st century, where I think it's rewiring men's brains into being these like outside observers and very weak and very passive and almost effeminate and very permissive of like child abuse and all this stuff. And so that's another part that I think a lot of modern Christians, and, and I'm not saying all, because a lot of Christians get it. I know a lot of Christians that really do follow the Bible, but the modern popcorn Christian, like the, the mega churches, the rainbow flag Christians, like, you know, those guys are not even close. They're like, not even, like, Muslims are more Christian 
than them. Like by far, not even a comparison. And that's why when they condemn Muslims for being this like problem, I'm like, dude, they're actually living the Bible way more than you, you know, because the fundamentals are, you know, uh, commandment one is so important. And so is like the discipline required to, to be in that frequency of not being like completely fallen and disgusting, you know, to see like, like lesbian female preachers, like you're just like, dude, you're so far off. Like seeing priests and pride parades. And I'm like, it's a pride parade. What's up next? The wrath parade, you know? And I think unfortunately that may be coming at some point. I'm like, you're not supposed to be identified by your sins. That means you can't, we all sin and we all have problems, but it's like to be identified by that is it means you've already taken the ticket, but they just keep saying like, I've accepted Jesus Christ. So I'm saved. And I'm like, no, he didn't like, if you, he didn't say that you could just live any way you want. You don't just say magic words. In fact, I bet in modern day, if they met Jesus, they'd probably hate him or not want to be around him or want him to get kicked off Twitter. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, when you, when you speak about um, initially, I think uh, maybe 20 minutes ago, Jesus was uh, praying, right? And who was he praying to? A question which I always ask to my Christian friends is, suppose if you see Jesus praying, would you pray to him or would you stand next to him to pray to the same creator that he's praying to? It's a pray waterfall. <laughs> just pray to pray to pray to pray. Like that's just yeah, just direct, uh, direct worship, right? So in Islam, there is no mediator because God, Allah is all knowing. He's all hearing. Why do we need to go through many, many channels when we can approach him directly? We have direct access to him. Pray to him, ask from him, get the mercy and the blessings from him. Cool, man. Uh, I wanted to, um, before we get into this next clip, I want to get your reaction to it. Uh, Owen, are there any questions that you have about Islam? I've just been really into the history of it lately. Like I, uh, like about like what happened in the 14th century with the fall of the Islamic empire and how that happened, like how, you know, there's some, some quotes that my friend was telling me about how the, the horse archers came out of China or Mongolia or whatever, and they had gotten so wealthy that they didn't have an army or whatever. And I just like want to know like what's the uh, what's the uh, the history in your communities and in your circles of what happened in Baghdad and those areas in the 14th century because like you know especially what's happening right now in America I'm always curious of what the forces are uh, in in empire and in conquest and all that stuff and and the Islamic Empire is so fascinating and so undertaught in Western schools that any information about that would be awesome. Yeah, you know, there is a good history book that I can refer to you. Uh, maybe I can send it to Eddie, the name of it, and maybe you can purchase right, yeah. and you can, inshallah, God willing, you can get access to it. Uh, it is written by a good friend of mine, a local imam in Chicago, half his class. Uh, Brother Eddie, I will send the link so you can pass it to okay, the brother, cool. inshallah. You know, uh, one important topic then, Brother Eddie, you can take over is the, the word Christian, you know, they were repeating it, you are repeating it. It's important for me and you to know historically, Jesus never said that, you know, my followers are Christians. He never said that you are now named as Christians. In fact, in all of the four Gospels, the word Christian does not occur at all. Who do you think, Brother Owen, who coined the word Christian for the Christians? Probably the Romans. I think you are right because what happened was followers of Christ, they were going to this idol worshippers. They, they were going to the city of Antioch to preach the oneness of God. Over there, the idol worshippers, they look from inside the city. The followers of Christ are coming and they said, the idol worshippers, here comes the Christians. So they were the ones who coined the word Christians to the followers of Christ. Not God, not Jesus, not even Paul, none of the disciples but the idol worshippers. And, and, and the, you can look this up. Uh, this is in the book of Acts, the fifth book, chapter 11, verse number 26. On top of it, the word Christianity does not occur anywhere in the whole Bible. The word Judaism does not occur in the whole Bible. The word Trinity does not occur in the whole Bible. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The word Bible does not occur anywhere in the Bible. Yeah, there's spells. You know, like my, my dad's a rhetoric professor, so... Uh, I, I kind of, from a young age, I knew about how spellcraft works. And, and sometimes I, I catch some of these and I'm like, 
Dude, I'm starting to think that the devil's like kind of like a really, really sick comedian where he's always trying to to, to humiliate man with like weird titles and, and like tricks where it's like banks that don't save money, hospitals that don't heal, schools that tell lies. Like there's this weird inversion irony where and I, I kind of had that, that idea already that Christian was given by the Romans is almost like a mockery. Mm -hmm. But I that stuff doesn't bother me too much because it's been 1700 years or whatever. And it's just like it's just more my cultural heritage and like what I, you know, it, I, I don't know. I can't explain it, but I do know that you're right. Well, I, I assume you're right about that because, yeah, I've done a lot of deep dives into the Bible with certain words and there was no Bible. Jesus didn't even write it down. Like he, there was no Bible, no Trinity, no word Christian. They were called holy. People were, who followed Jesus were more called holy. And I think that comes from the word whole, like total. Yeah. Um, actually, they're, they're called the people of the way. People of the path. That's that's awesome. That's yes, awesome. And, and they used to submit to God and anyone who submits only to the one creator and do the guidance and fulfills the guidance that Allah God has given. The term that we give that person is a submitter to the creator. In Arabic, that person is called as a Muslim. So for that reason, we say Jesus was a Muslim because he used to submit to the creator. His followers were Muslims, initial followers, obviously. All the prophets were Muslims. So the faith of Islam is the, you know, you may be thinking, brother, that it is a 7th century faith founded by Muhammad, peace be upon him. That's not the case, though. Islam as a guidance was given to the very first human, Adam. And all the prophets, they were given that same faith of Islam. That means only submit to the one creator, follow his guidance, and God, by his mercy, will put you into paradise. So what no, happened was... It's an eternal thing. I get it. It's like, because the, the truth is fractal in everything in the world. That's why it's mm -hmm. like, you don't need, as as uh, Patrick Coffin was saying, which I disagree with in that intervention, um, you don't need an outside authority. When he said it the Trinity required an outside authority, an outside interpreter, a middleman, you know, it's like the middleman, the merchant, you know, it's like, I get it, the, 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 the debt guy. It's like, you don't need that. It's like, you can see the truth in it in your life every day like every commandment every um element of it is is real all around you all the time and has always been here like the mm -hmm. truth one of the reasons people say i'm a time traveler i'm not by the way <laughs> is because the truth never changes so it appears i keep seeing stuff coming you know in my live streams and it's because the truth doesn't change you know the spells change the snake eats itself all the nonsense all around you but like the truth is all is static. It's still, it's loving, you know, it's, it's like, and that's why I love how you guys describe um, God as like being very forgiving and very, you know, like all powerful and without limits and very merciful because, you know, the fact that I have three beautiful children and a wife and a, a farm and all this stuff, given what my life has been like, I feel like God has given me tremendous mercy and I am very happy for that. And I think a lot of people, Muslim or Christian or whatever people want to call themselves. It's like gratitude is so important. Here's another thing I like about a lot of Muslim videos is you guys seem to be able to identify the false virtue guy at the mosque really well. Because I think um, Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, really hated. The, now, I'm not going to use the word hate, but really didn't like the guys that uh, that like uh, pretended, you know, they wanted virtue from their public, like their, their virtue in their deeds, but no real heart in it, you know. And I think that is a struggle that is eternal as well. And it can infest any community where like, you're not doing it for the love of God. You're doing it for the lollipops and fancy pants is what we like to call it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, I'm just, I, I think gratitude and love and, and uh, truth is so important and discipline. And uh, it's really awesome that you gave up being a doctor to, uh, to spread Islam because that's, that's cool, man. That's like really, I know that can be really hard for people to give up, um, uh, worldly status and uh you know the, the the pit and the pedestal is very real uh uh technique to keep people in bondage and it's really cool you did that yeah i mean you know we only have one life to live once we are on in you know facing the creator on the day of judgment and he's asking us how did you live your life i don't have a chance again to come back to this world and do the things that i want to do to please him this is the only life just do the best you know, learn the scriptures, the Quran, the final scripture, you know, be like Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and all the wonderful prophets, help out humanity, only one life to live. 
So for but that, have you, you, have you felt like, like your life's gotten better though? Like, like. Like when you really submit and you really start doing what's right and not just for life, like don't you feel better now? I feel a lot better than before. Yes, yes. We have yeah, the yeah, peace yeah. and content. Now we trust yeah, exactly. God. Now we, have, now we are more hopeful. Now we are exactly. away from any depression, you know, any medicine. I mean, I don't take medicine, but you don't need any medicine at all. Now you, God is the one who is going to be there for you, yeah. right? So the ultimate trust, the peace, the content is just priceless. We'll get this reaction. We got about 10 minutes left. We'll get uh, a quick reaction from Owen. We'll listen to this. Uh, I just want you to see, just listen. And then Owen, just tell me, it's not a spell. All right. I just want you to listen and see. Yeah. Yeah. So just listen and see, you know, at the end, like your reaction to it. And then we'll get into uh, the final clip uh, about some farming, farming, and we'll close it, close it off. Uh, and then what I wanted to add to what you guys were saying before I, before I play this next clip is uh, what came to my mind is how simple and profound it is that, you know, if someone is sincerely seeking the pleasure of their creator and to be guided, you know, it's not convoluted like the devil tries to make it out to be. It's just someone within themselves asking, say, the one who created me, guide me, guide me, guide me. You know, just praying to the creator, the most loving, the most merciful and saying, guide me. What way do you want me? There's so much out there. Which is the correct way? Guide me. That's it. How many people actually ask for guidance directly to the creator of the heavens and earth? So that, that's, I think, the formula. And be grateful, grateful and thankful. Yes. The reaction to this. تلك آيات الكتاب وقرآن مبين ربما يود الذين كفروا لو كانوا مسلمين درهم يأكل ويتمتع ويلههم الأمل فسوف يعلمون وما أهلكنا من قرية إلا ولها كتاب معلوم ما تسبق من أمة أجلها وما يستأخرون وقالوا يا أيها الذي نزل عليه الذكر إنك لمجنون لو ما تأتينا بالملائكة إن كنت من الصادقين ما ننزل الملائكة إلا بالحق وما كانوا وما كانوا إذا منظرين إنا نحن نزلنا الذكر وإنا له لحافظون ولقد أرسلنا من قبلك في شيع الأولين وما يأتيهم من رسول إلا كانوا به يستهزئون كذلك نسلكه في قلوب المجرمين لا يؤمنون به وقد خلت سنة الأولين و... Any reaction or not? Yeah, it was great, man. I love that. So this is, do you know what that was? I don't. Th this was, go ahead, Dr. Sabil. What was he listening to? Yeah, obviously, this is a recitation from the Quran, the last testament that God has given as a guidance to humanity. And it basically uh, referring uh, about the grand reality. Mubin means which is the clear manifestation, the clear uh, which is the clear uh, reality that we all know and we all have to face, that there is only one creator. All the prophets, they came to speak about him, to invite people to worship him. And if we do our best, if there is any shortcoming, obviously we should repent to the Creator directly, no mediator. And it says in the Quran, He will forgive all the sins. You know, except one sin, if a person dies with that, the sin of associating partners with God, saying that this person is God or that idol is God or this uh, this part of the creation is God. But generally, any other sin, Allah God can forgive. So our reality is that God has uh, given us guidance, and by obeying the guidance. Inshallah, God willing, by His mercy, we will go to paradise. So that is the grand reality. And that is the message that God has sent to all the prophets and the messengers. So we can always discuss so many topics about Trinity, the concept of God, right? The scriptures, the way for salvation. At the end of the day, me, you, every single one of us, we have to face the Creator. 
you know, just like when we went to schools and colleges, there is a uh, assessment at the end of the semester by the teacher based upon all the things that we have done that semester. So the final grade of ours as humans, as individuals would be given to us on the day of judgment. So ultimately there would be two options up there, right? Or the two, only two places that God can put us either in paradise, we hope and pray all of us or hellfire. And we seek Allah's God's, you know, God's protection against it. So, so according to the Islamic theology, to go to paradise would be, we don't worship anyone else besides one God. We believe in all the prophets and the messengers and all the scriptures given before the Quran came. And now the final scripture, because the previous scriptures, the Old Testament, the New Testament, they were all have been edited and revised and altered. We don't have them in, in the pure way that they were given to the previous prophets. And then we believe in the angels and in the divine decree and on the day of judgment. So once a person believes in this grand reality and do the deeds that God wants us to do, that's the way for salvation according to Islam. You are saying something, Brother Rowan. Oh yeah, is there uh, periods of hellfire? Do you guys believe that, that you might have to burn for a little while and then you can get out? Uh, so generally both hellfire and paradise, they are forever. Like paradise forever for sure, right? But yeah. those believers whose sins are not forgiven, they would be purified in the hellfire for whatever length of time and then they would be taken out. But those individuals, for example, despite knowing the truth, they keep on associating partners, keep on believing and worshiping a creation along yeah. with God or instead of God. You know, according to the Quran, it will be there for a long time. Yeah, yeah, because that's 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 how that's what my instincts tell me is like because mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that there's like fractal realities of that while you're alive. Like the more you go against God, it may appear that you're doing well, but you're not allowed to feel joy. And like you start like burning almost where it's like, mm -hmm. does that make sense? Where it's almost like a correction where it's like you got to get back on the path. And if you refuse and if you're stubborn and if you don't accept that burning, <laughs> Like, and this is even while you're alive, and I'm sure after it's like way crazier, but like, that's, that's kind of like what my instincts say. We're like, you know, there's, there's correction mechanisms where if somebody sees, sees it, they can be purged of, of sin versus just like, maybe there's some people that are just, you know, going to burn forever. I, that just sounds so horrifying. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, for that reason, we say that this life is a testing ground. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And sure God has given way. us clear <laughs> guidance. He, he gave us clear guidance and he has also showed us, you know, what is the error that we should be uh, staying away from. So on the day of judgment, we cannot blame Satan, you know, Shaitan. Right. And Shaitan is going to say on the day of judgment, I just told you to do this. You are the one who actually did it. You means, you know, anyone I'm saying. You are the one who actually did it. So he's going to, you know, walk away. We cannot, you know, hold him and say, you know what, God, he's the one who took us here. No, ultimately, we are the ones God gave us the ability, the thinking, the conscious that we should be the one making the right decisions and not blame on anyone else. Yeah, okay. it's so true, man. It's like that when you're getting a loan, you know, it's like when they repossess your house, you can say, I didn't know. But they're like, you read the contract. I gave you a contract. It's at adjustable rate mortgage like you agreed. And that's why I think a lot of the people on this earth who are doing the bidding of shaitan uh get away with it because they require you to know and to contract with them and then they get to walk away and i think that happens as well with judgment where it's like you can never say the devil made you do it you know exactly exactly yeah. you know many of my so so far we have about five thousand plus people on behalf of the organization that i'm director of they of their own choice you know majority of them they are from the christian background once they started to read the Quran, they found the answers in the Quran to the questions they had all throughout their lives. You know, who is the creator? Is he one in one or is he one in three? They found the answer in the Quran with clarity about who Jesus is. You know, Jesus is the son of God. He's also God. And God came down. God died. Who's going to run the universe? This confusion, Quran gives the clear cut answer that satisfies here and here. What guidance to follow? We all need to follow some guidance. When we went to school, when we drive on the road, right? When we go to any work, there is some do's and don'ts we are supposed to follow. So what kind of guidance that God has given us to follow, both individuals and his family and his humanity? 
So in the Quran, it's a comprehensive guidance. So again, over there, a person gets you know, connected with it. And lastly, how to go to paradise? Is it somebody dying for us? Is it reincarnation after re reincarnation, the cycle goes on and on? Or is it personal accountability that you drive over the limit, you get the ticket, not you or not anyone else? Yeah, yeah, totally. Right, so all of these four important concepts, Brother Owen, they appeal to this individual. So that is the reason Islam is the fastest growing faith in the USA and actually around the world. So my sincere hope and uh, you know my encouragement to you is, you know, read the Quran. I'm not sure if you have a copy of the Quran. Do you? I have one. I've read about it's the one I have is really uh really intense. It has like footnotes of every line and like all. And so it was a little heavy, but my friend said he might have he has a, a simpler version. Yes. Um, yeah, so I'll check it out. But he sends me uh like memes and cool videos and stuff all the time. So I'm I'm really glad you guys exist, man. I think you guys are uh, uh, really cool people. And you know, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, you were finishing. Well, no, I just it's just really cool because that's what I, I, I don't understand about. I guess I do understand. But some people don't want to let go hatred that they know is fake now because I'm I'm considered a truther, you know, where it's like I like to get to the bottom of stuff, even if it costs me, you know, social status. But and then like so we get to the bottom of 9-11, not who did it. That's too hard to do. But like building seven fall, I, I, you know, I don't want to get your YouTube channel flagged or anything. So well, we all know that there's nonsense, but yet people will still hold on to the hate to justify empire wars. And I'm like, why won't you let that go now? Like it, we're past that. How do you not now know that there's no Muslim burial 80 miles off the coast of like on a ship? Like looking back, we were so tricked. Like they said, Osama bin Laden had a Muslim burial, an anonymous 80 miles off the coast. They dropped him off a boat. And like all the right wingers were all up in arms, like how dare Obama give him a Muslim burial? And, and the other people were like, he deserves a Muslim burial. I'm like, how is that a Muslim burial? Like, is that a Muslim burial, guys? Do you get dropped off a ship 80 miles off a coast? Like, I, I think that sounds. And so what I hope for the future is that people once people see that someone isn't your enemy or that a lot of people like the way muslims live i think is really beautiful like i think that um that submission to god that that's what that means that's awesome that it's like you you don't like debt you don't like pornography you follow the prophets you follow god i think that's just so great man it's like um i think i really hope that more people see that and they don't hold on to that because it'll only hurt them in the long run where they they're holding on to like lies because it, it'll justify their sin. Like I'm tight with a lot of special forces guys and stuff like that. And a lot of them, the only way they got through the wars is admitting that they were guarding a poppy field. Like admit it. Like we weren't there avenging New York city. You know, it's been 20 years. And once they admit that and the truth sets them free, then they're good again. And that's how well, I believe that God is merciful because like people have done some crazy stuff under these spells, myself included. I'm sure I'm under a spell right now that I'm not aware of. But like to to admit it when you see it is so important. And that's why I'm really glad that we're all friends and that we can have these conversations because like I'm not going to pretend something is something it isn't, you know, and I hope more people see that about Islam and how how close it is to the Christian Bible and how it isn't you know, it's the Christian dogma that got so crazy, specifically Rome, in my opinion. And it's like, I just hope people really focus on the upcoming problems we have, which are all familial. You know, it's all about keeping that family together. One thing I love about Islam is uh, that you guys talk about how um, it's like uh, if, if, a, if a little demon gets a, a husband and wife to fight, he gets to sit on like Satan's lap or something. Is that like in a hadith or something? Yeah, yeah. So, so that's what uh, Shaitan, uh, you know, he wants to split the communities. He wants to split right. the families. Right. That's yeah. what makes his day. He yes, he does. Mm -hmm. And so, you guys are so family oriented that I love that because the Shaitan wants the mom and dad to split. They want the communities to split. They want the wells to go dry. No more cow. Like no, none of this. Satan is not like that. Satan is yeah. not like like I can supply milk for five families and that like. Me and my friends can all get together and do our own thing. Satan wants the atomization. So I, I dig what you guys are doing, and I'm glad we had this conversation.
That's uh, interesting. You brought up this uh, authentic hadith because this hadith illustrates the importance of family, like how the devil, you know, the shaitan, this is the chief, you know, the chief deceiver, Iblis, the, the head devil. And then you have all the, 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 the other satanic forces. So he's sitting and he's calling them and he's saying, okay, what did you do today? For instance, this one said, I had this one commit fornication. Okay, yeah. And then he said, this one, what did you do? I had this one steal. Okay, these are evil things. They're evil, right? But he's like, okay, no big deal, right? Okay, then he says, what did you do? I split a husband from his wife. He said, ah, oh, boom, come over here. Come to me here. He put, the, he put the crown on his head because what happens if you break the home? You break the society, right? All these other things are evil, but that's the key one. So that's what's important in Islam is to hold the family unity because you hold the family unity. That's what makes the society right let me get into this last one you have a uh, you have a uh, someone who really likes uh, who follows you he's from uh, Bosnia so you even your your work is reaching all the way to Bosnia Owen and I I think I, I just give you a quick summary uh, you had the back where my roots back in Bosnia I, I was born in the United States but my family uh, comes from Bosnia this is in the heart of Europe and a quick summary you had Unitarian Christians there you know, who, when Islam came, these were Unitarian Christians who didn't believe in the Trinity, you know, similar to, to you and many others. Uh, they would not, they would pray outside. They would pray like Jesus prayed to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And when submission to the will of the creator came, the Islam, well, that's what it means, to submit your will to God. They were the largest concentrated group of people who accepted Islam all at once. So this is in the heart there in Bos in Europe, Bosnia. So uh, we're here at the farm, and if you ever, I think I mentioned this to you before, uh, Orhan would love to host you. So this is me there. You can kind of give you just a, a little bit of uh, what uh, you would you would see and where you'd stay. Nice. Just the milking station here. Beautiful. That's legit, man. Wow. That's a lot of milk. Uh, the Almighty set it up where they start, what happens, they start to grow, eat more and grow more grow specific, hair. specific hair. Below to minus 25 degrees to, Celsius. To this is our Orhan here. So then, look, look, he's got a thing. These are the females. Now look at the male here. What do you, let's see if you can strike the, the difference. Here's your favorite going. So this is the male, huh? <laughs> look, look, he's got a beard. He's got a beard. Nice. <laughs> that is awesome. Wow, look at that place. Beautiful. <laughs> What's in here, actually? This is oh. Rosemary. Ro Rosemary made from organic. Protein. These are all no, juices. Sugar, just 100%. Nice. Beer. What kind of? This pear juice. Yes. Pear juice. We got honey also. Honey. Plum. This is not alcohol. These are all juices made from Marshallah. corn here. Or more GMO. Dude, this is beautiful. Okay, so this is, That's uh, the life. This is in the United States, no, no. Yes. In, in the United States, the corn is 80% uh, or more GMO. This is non-GMO corn. This is the real corn here. So you'd be eating organic. Real, purely real, organic. Love it. Real corn. Organic. Well, that's the life. This is my, my father old. That's, and then some jujitsu. This is my son. That's awesome. And that's Orhan here. Rest of and then we and then we get you some uh, horse riding. <laughs> I don't know if there's one for my size. I'm six eight, man. I'm a giant. We got the big horses too. So this is uh, where I'm sure or Orhan would love to host you there. Heidi, Heidi, yeah, man. Come. If you're next tour, if I come through, I'm definitely coming. So if you're ever in Europe, uh, Orhan would get to see this, and I'll, I'll hook you up. He'd love to uh, to have you there in. Uh, in Bosnia and Sarajevo, so we'll get you at the. We'll we'll get you to the farm. All right, closing comments, uh, Dr. Sabio, Owen. We're we're coming to a close here. I just yes. this is a blast, yeah. man. No, go ahead, doctor. No, no. Well, I mean, I want to really appreciate you know the sincerity that you have. 
being brought up in the culture here with so much pressure to retain you know what you have been given it just it just makes a person you know with that much sincerity to look out and to question and to seek for the truth so i really uh, you know really appreciate what you are saying what you are doing you know if people don't know your background just looking at three of us they will say you know what these three muslim guys are on the show <laughs> they will take you as a muslim based upon the comments that you have you know um, the concept of god that you're saying and all the wonderful things so i would really suggest to you brother that you know read the quran read it again ask questions me and eddie we are always here to help you and inshallah god willing you will find that uh, it will give you peace and content and it will connect with the bigger reality that means there is only one creator knowing him following him knowing his guidance following the guidance and praying to god for giving us the the content the peace the solutions in this life so i think that is the bigger reality that you know i would really hope and pray that you will uh, do more research and i pray to god that may god guide you may god bless you and your family so you and your family can get eternal paradise and all of us amen you as well my friend that's beautiful man and i just like to also tell your audience that um um my comedy is uh there there's vulgarity in it and so but it's in a world of vulgarity and so it's not for kids so if anybody wants to look me up and check it out it isn't evil though it isn't bad it's like it's a language that is part of the culture i was trying to dismantle like the 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 really sick culture that's kind of developed in the west sometimes you have to have the uh the language of that which you're mocking. So I just want to give a disclaimer for that cuz you can check out my specials at unauthorized.tv or Amazon Prime or Comedy Central or any of that stuff. And um uh, but for the family for the that that beautiful Bosnian family I just saw, we have developed a uh more of a solutions oriented thing like more of a um uh, the Bertaria Times app. It's completely clean. It's like a five-year-old can sc uh, scroll through it. It's all solutions-based. It's not about complaining. It's about like growing, starting families, you know, connecting homesteads. And because I'm not in the, the complaint business these days, it's like enough people are seeing the system and how it's victimizing a lot of people. And so me and some friends figured out a, a, a way to help each other connect and to, uh, and to grow. So I just want to let your audience know that, that when they check out my comedy, the adults will get it, uh, but there is vulgarity to it. And I, out of respect, I'm, I'm being very obviously um, non-vulgar in this conversation, but so just keep, just watch out for that. But at the same time, uh, you'll see the points I'm making and how it isn't, I'm never encouraging the sin. It's I'm mocking the sin, but it's, it's like, I'm doing it in a way that, uh, that people will listen to. Thank you, Owen. Really nice having you on the program. Again, if you're also in Chicago or by Indiana sometime, Northwest, uh, hit, hit me up, and hopefully we can uh, all meet up uh, in person someday. I will. And, That'd be great. And if you're ever in Idaho, you're always welcome. God bless you, man. Thank and you so brother, much. And if well. anyone else would like to get a free copy, you know, so my organization, what we do is we mail out free copies of the Quran anywhere in the USA for people to read it and educate themselves, do away with the misconceptions and inshallah, hopefully find guidance. They can go to the website gainpeace.com. And when awesome, you click on, yeah, so anyone, yourself, your family, your friends, they can get a free copy. Copy of the Muslim community. Thank, Thank you, you both. both. God, God bless you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Peace.